Ever wondered how other solopreneurs streamline the way that they manage the finance side of their business? Hear from Susanna Ray, an online business architect specializing in helping experts monetize their wisdom. Roland Huscher, a freelance type designer with a passion for branding and custom fonts. And Anna Lundberg, a business mentor empowering corporate professionals to create freedom and fulfillment in their work and life. Let's jump right into it. Okay, let's begin with Susanna, whom I met in the Youpreneur Incubator hosted by Chris Ducker. Susanna is based in the UK and she has been working online for over 20 years. She helps service-based business owners, or mainly coaches and consultants, understand how they can best monetize their wisdom and their expertise. She will share with you the tool she uses to streamline the finance side of her business. And if you've listened to episode 92 or 94, the name should be familiar to you. For the finance side of my business, I use Free Agent, which is an accounting software. And where this really helps is it completely syncs up with my bank account in terms of the bank account that I use for all my main business, but also it can sync up with my Stripe account and my PayPal. So it automatically pulls in all the transactions and asks me and notifies me on a regular basis of, hey, can you categorize this? Is it a sale, an expense? Is it a um, marketing, advertising? So this really speeds up then doing returns at the end of the year, because as you go along, it's prompting you to say, categorize this and categorizing it as and when it happens, is so much easier than thinking back, what was that transaction for like £250 three months ago? It's gone out of my head by then. So Free Agent is a really cool tool. It's linked with my business account and with my, say, Stripe and PayPal. Thanks a lot, Susanna. You can connect with Susanna on LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram. Her website is susannareay.com. I will put all the links in the show notes. My main takeaway from Susanna is the importance of choosing tools that natively integrate with others. In the case of Free Agent, it supports the direct import of major banks established in Great Britain and Northern Ireland that are taking part in open banking. Now, for UK banks that don't take part of that or for banks in other parts of the world, it's still possible with Free Agent to import CSV files that you'd manually export from your bank account dashboard. Even though it's feasible, it is much more time consuming. And so if you're not based in the UK, then FreshBooks is a much better alternative to Free Agent. The reason is very simple. It supports the direct import of bank transactions from banks all around the world. FreshBooks uses different intermediaries based on the bank location and connecting the bank account that I use for EasyTech here in Luxembourg was pretty painless. Now, it's important to know that the first time that you will set up the connection, it will import a maximum of 90 days of bank transaction activity. And so for all the transactions or if your bank is not supported, you can still manually import them from a file in CSV format. Having said that, FreshBooks is the perfect online accounting tool for solopreneurs, especially those still managing their finances via a collection of spreadsheets. You can try FreshBooks for free for 30 days using my referral link, macpreneur.com forward slash FreshBooks in one word. Enter your email address or sign up with your Apple ID or Google account no credit card required. And if you end up becoming a FreshBooks customer after using my referral link, I will get a small commission at no cost to you. It's like a virtual high five for recommending stuff that I love and that I use. So thanks in advance for supporting me and the MacPonna podcast. Once again, visit macponacom forward slash FreshBooks to start your 30-day free trial today. Okay, now let's hear from Roland Huscher. I met Roland back in 2016 at the Sean West Conference in Austin, Texas. He's an extremely talented designer who creates retail fonts and helps businesses with services such as branding, including logos. In fact, Roland created the current MacPono logo and color palette. 
He is serving clients from all around the world and he will share with you the tool that helps him seamlessly get paid. Managing finances, I think PayPal is still one of the best options out there. It's available almost everywhere, except for a few regions. I had a client in Turkey and we had to arrange a different form of payment, which took more time and effort, plus it's cost more. But other than that, PayPal is definitely a good choice. Thanks a lot, Roland. You can find Roland on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. You just search for Roland Huse Design, H-U-S-E. His website is rolandhuse.com. So PayPal is the OG online payment processor that launched in 1999. It was owned by eBay between 2002 and 2015 and is an independent entity since then. Nowadays, PayPal can be used in more than 200 countries or regions. Now, in some of them, the users can only send money, while in other countries, PayPal users can send, receive, and withdraw money. And as Roland mentioned, PayPal isn't available in Turkey anymore, according to Wikipedia, they ceased operation there in 2016 after refusing to have data centers located inside the country. The main competitor to PayPal is Stripe. However, sellers from only 46 countries can create an account to receive payments with it. On the flip side, Stripe accepts payments from customers located all around the world via all major credit card providers, but also Apple Pay, Google Pay, SIPA Direct uh, Debit, PayPal, and many more. Where Stripe shines is the compatibility with more than 450 online platforms and the extensive developer options through a well-designed API or application programming interface, which allows developers to easily accept payments inside web and mobile applications too. And on top of that, Stripe offers additional services like Stripe Tax, which helps the process of calculating the amount of tax owed in multiple jurisdictions like the US, Canada, EU, Australia, and, and the other supported countries. Being a solopreneur now for over 11 years, my take is that when it comes to PayPal and Stripe, it's not an either-or situation, but an and situation provided that you live in one of the 46 countries supported by Stripe. In other words, we solopreneurs should embrace both PayPal and Stripe and use the one that makes the most sense in any given situation. And if you can't create a Stripe account, then PayPal is by far the best solution for you. Last but not least, Anna Lundberg. I met Anna in the Upreneur Incubator 2, and in addition to her coaching activity, she produces the Reimagining Success podcast. In fact, Anna interviewed me back in summer 2023, and if you're curious, head on to episode 249, where you will discover my journey from traditional employment to entrepreneurship. And for the video version, just visit onestepoutside.com forward slash macpreneur. Now, when it comes to boosting the finances side of her business, Anna will share how she's using Free Agent 2. When it comes to the finance side of my business, I use Free Agent. So, of course, there's lots of uh, accounting software out there, but that's the one I landed on back in the day, having given up on my Excel sheets that I used the first few years of my business a long, long time ago. What I love about Free Agent is a few different things. One is it pulls in my bank feed. So automatically everything's just there. Of course, it's syncing with my Starling business account. Then also I, of course, can look at any reports so I can see what the cash flow situation is like, incoming, outgoing, very important. And I can look at the P&L reports, you know, partially through the year as well as at the end of the year. And I can compare to previous years and so on. So that's something that I would definitely recommend checking regularly in the business to know your numbers. You can really see then and um, very clearly on the dashboard, you know, red, lots of expenses going out and green, perhaps not so much coming in. So that's really valuable. The other really useful part of it is I can generate invoices. So I use that with my B2B corporate clients. 
B to Z is done on my membership site, which is run with Member Press and Stripe and so on. But the invoices that go to corporate clients, businesses, and the really powerful thing there is, and it seems simple, that it can generate automatic emails. So hi there, here's your latest invoice, but also, oh, just so you know, the invoice is due next week, next week. It's due tomorrow. It was due yesterday. And especially, of course, the overdue invoices, really, really powerful because you then don't have to spend time doing it. And also you don't have to have that ickiness of having to chase people. It's not you as the accountant. You can even, someone told me once, make up a name for sort of an accountant who's sending those things for you. Now, I, I, my accountant or bookkeeper don't do that part of it. But of course, you could have your assistant, Dave in accounts, who chases those late invoices that are unfortunately quite common um, here in the UK. And imagine there are, they are elsewhere as well. So just having an overview of my finances, seeing the money coming in and out, the bank feed, and then the really um, practical, very useful um, aspect of sending automatic invoice reminders. So that's free agent. Thanks a lot, Anna. You can find Anna on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Her handle is Anna S. E. Lundberg, and her website is onestepoutside.com. My main takeaway from Anna is that using a full-featured online accounting tool can help us streamline the finance side of our business because it serves multiple purposes. Whether it's free agent, fresh books, or QuickBooks Online, this tool can help us create professional-looking invoices, get paid directly from the invoices, and automatically send email reminders and late payment notices. And by pulling bank account transactions automatically, these tools can give us a pretty accurate overview of our year-to-date profitability. Now, those tools are not that good at forecasting profitability, which is why I'm still using a dedicated spreadsheet for that. I covered this topic in the previous episode, episode 95. So if you missed that one, just click on the banner that appears in the top right corner of this video. Before concluding this episode, there's one more thing I'd like to mention. Don't beat yourself up for not having fully figured out how to streamline your business yet, whether it's the marketing, operations, or finance side. I have been on this solopreneur journey for more than 10 years, and I feel I haven't fully optimized any of those sides yet. It's okay. The key is to cultivate a continuous improvement mindset. Look at it more like a marathon rather than a sprint. Start with one process, say invoicing your clients, and then the first step would be to document that process by writing down everything you do. At the end of this exercise, you will have your first SOP or Standard Operating Procedure. Step number two, mentally go through this process several times and ask yourself what could be eliminated, either by rearranging steps or by tackling any of the three killers of Mac productivity, unnecessary clicks, repetitive typing, and file clutter. Eliminate as many redundant actions as possible. For instance, when I want to send a PDF invoice directly from my EasyTech email address, rather than from FreshBooks, I need to click several times to print the invoice as PDF. But now, by defining my own keyboard shortcut for the Save as PDF action, I can save a little bit of time every time. Step number three, go through the improved process and now ask yourself what could be automated. In my case, whenever a client would pay an invoice by bank transfer, I marked the invoice as paid in fresh books and then I needed to find the associated sale in Podio, my CRM, and then manually mark it as paid. I've done that for years until I realized that I could automate it with Zapier. And now, as soon as I enter the payment in FreshBooks, Zapier finds the right sale in Podio and marks it as paid just for me. And with the help of AI, creating these automations in Zapier is easier than ever. So to recap, you can save a lot of time managing the finance side of your business by using the right tool or online service. Like Susanna, see if you can link your online accounting tool to your business bank account for seamless transfer of transactions. And if you have clients from all around the world like Roland, check out PayPal or Stripe to get paid safely and promptly. And finally, choose an online accounting tool that can give you quick insights about the financial health of your business 
and automate the process of sending late payment reminders like Anna do. Many thanks again to Susanna, Roland and Anna for sharing their own experience with us. In the comments below, please share your main takeaway from this episode and if not done yet, please subscribe to my channel so you'll automatically get more helpful tips on how to run your business on your Mac. And if you're ready to streamline your solo business but don't know where to start, sign up for my 360 degree tech diagnostic service. After filling a comprehensive assessment form, we will have a Zoom call during which I will give you my top three recommendations, including tools and services to consider. After the call, you'll receive a summary report with the points that we discussed and all the necessary links. And if you decide to work with me one-on-one -on -one after that, I will deduct the diagnostic fees from the first coaching pack that you will purchase. To learn more about that, just visit macbonnet.com forward slash diagnostic or click the link in the show notes. So that's it for today. In fact, it was the last episode of season four, which means that the next episode will kick off season five of the podcast, focusing on the digital security of your solopreneur business. So make sure to subscribe or follow this podcast to get it automatically next week. And until next time, I'm Damien Schroers, wishing you a great day. Thank you for watching the Macpreneur podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please leave a comment and share it with a friend right now.